En ik ben benieuwd of ik dat hier ook zie. Ah, hier gaat hij ook online. Zo. So, I guess we're good. And I guess, I guess we're alive. Oké, okay, great. Oké, okay, great. Oké, okay, great. <laughs> good to see you again, Timon. Yeah. After a, a while. Yeah, right. right. Yeah. How long has it been? I don't know. Maybe half a year or something? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I, I haven't, haven't seen you since I moved here, right? No, indeed. Uh, yeah, so yeah, indeed, you decided to go back to uh, Wageningen in this beautiful yeah. foresty area. area. Yeah. Do you like it? Yeah, yeah, it's very comfortable. I was a little bit afraid of like, because for those of you who obviously don't know, this area is very, it's a small village and uh, not much to do. Yeah. But um, I run a lot and it's ideal for running because a yeah. lot of fields and forest and next to the river. So yeah, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, other than that, Holland is so small, so I can just jump in the train or borrow sure. a car or something. And yeah. So easy. Yeah, that's not uh, that's not a problem at all. Yeah. No. Yeah, I I was able to pick up running again uh, two weeks ago, I guess, oh. because I was having some uh, back issues, so I wasn't okay. able to do any sports. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's it's getting better. So uh, I uh, was able to yeah to do my runs. I, I run like two or three times a week, uh, about four or five kilometers. But that's uh, good next to the canal. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's it's, where I used to run as well. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, just uh, prefer to do it in the evenings, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. it relaxes me and, uh, yeah, to clear your head, you know. It's, uh, yeah. I like it. I like to do it, yeah. Yeah, it's addictive. Yeah, I was I was doing really well. I don't know if you uh, saw my uh, social post lately, but I was uh, I decided to go for a marathon training. Yeah, I read about it. Yeah. That's a challenge. Well, apparently it's not really that much of a challenge. You know, I, I started... Uh, reading into it seriously and I uh, realized that what I do in my day-to-day uh, -day normal training is so is such a great jump off point okay really all you have to do is one day a week just run more basically okay. on longer distances and that's it and then you're gonna build the distances up until you can do 40 what is it 42, 42. kilometers yeah, yeah. but right. then I got a lot of pain in this food I... and I kept running and then um, apparently now I have a stress fracture. So I have a little uh, fracture in my oh, head. Oh, you should have listened to your body sooner. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. just, but now you can't run at all or? No. Shit. No, I was at the orthopedic. Is that the word in English? I think so. Uh, two days ago. And um, all right. yeah, it's highly likely that and they're going to actually put my foot in an MRI scanner. So that's kind of exciting. I've never been in such a thing. Okay. So, because they, they need cannot, to have a look at the bones, or yeah, they cannot cannot see it on a, a normal X-ray machine. It's okay. Too, uh, I don't know why, but yeah. So they need to examine w what exactly is wrong, and then see yeah. how they can treat it, or yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. But it's fine. I'm I'm sure it's it's minor, and I'll be All back. Right. And uh, you yeah. can you're able to walk normally without pain. Yeah, since a couple of days now. Okay. So that's good. Yeah. Okay. So uh, yeah. In recovery modus, I yeah, guess. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm biking a lot now. Uh -huh. And uh, yeah, even bought those uh, special pants where you have like a diaper part in your ass. You know? <laughs> what? <laughs> you know those pants? You like the race biking? Yeah, or... yeah, yeah. Okay. It's so gay, but you know. Don't you have like uh, nice mountain bike trails in the, in the area here? Uh. Because that's what I did. I was on uh, a little work holiday uh, in mm -hmm. August. You know, I went to this... Uh, to this uh, sh this cabin in the woods, and Where? Uh, it's I was uh, it was in the woods near Helmond, okay, and uh, just by myself, and I brought my recording stuff, hmm. and I was uh, thinking, uh, and I brought some books, you know, like general mapping of of, of new music for for Autark, my band, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, the guy that I was renting it from, he said like, well, there's a very nice mountain bike trail right next to uh, to the cabin. So I decided to rent a mountain bike for a couple of days, and, uh, and then I was doing that track, you know, and see okay. uh, if you can improve the, you know, the lap time, so to say. Yeah, yeah. It takes about half an hour to do a nine point one kilometer lap. Mm -hmm. It's it's fun. 
but mm. yeah, I like the type of uh, activity, you know, like skateboarding and stuff that is a bit yeah. adrenaline based, so to say. Mm -hmm. It's so, a little more interactive also than just plain endurance sports where it's just dial in your speed and you yeah. go, 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 right? Yeah. Different so mindset. It was, I thought it was very nice to do. Um, I'm going back there in uh, October holiday mm. for a couple of days. So yeah, because I really liked it and it uh, really helps to be uh, alone for a bit and, um, you know, develop ideas for new songs and yeah, uh, you know the, just go with the weather you know if it's sunny you can go outside for a walk or a run or do the mountain bike trail and if it's mm -hmm. rainy or whatever then you can just be inside and record you know? yeah 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 coincidentally my little brother just uh invited me to go mountain biking next week so and we're Great. only gonna do that so i don't think i ever really did well maybe you know when when we were young like we all had mountain bikes right like th there was this time in the 90s when you didn't yeah, have when a lot of people bike, had them yeah i, yeah, I didn't, didn't have one no. no yeah i did for a number of years but i don't think i ever really went mountain biking no but yeah sounds fun yeah no not me neither uh, uh up until last uh, august then mm. i tried it and i really liked it so i was planning on doing it more because uh there's also a trail a 17 kilometer trail uh in the tilburg area where i live mm -hmm. like in the woods in west and the race mm -hmm. i didn't get to it yet but i will get nice. to it <laughs> yeah so um well that was a nice introduction i guess um so maybe um Maybe we can dive a little bit into music and um, your background also as a musician. Yeah. It doesn't have to be like a s super formal interview type of thing, but I am kind of curious to talk a little bit about your background. Sure. And, and I think we talked maybe, we have talked about it over the years, but never in too much detail, I guess. Yeah, I, I don't really remember. But yeah, 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 I mean, you speak, we spoke a lot about you know, like uh, what musical direction we should go or wh what that mm -hmm. type of uh, decision uh, would come from, you know? Mm -hmm. But I don't think we went into detail about, you know, like what inspired you as a kid or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah it's also not something you, that's more like interview talk or something, not maybe things you talk to, uh, yeah. to your friends about, right? Well, I can tell you a bit about it. Because I was uh, right. recently, I was a bit uh, speaking a bit about it. Uh, because I teach at this uh, school called uh, Mel Factory. It's mm -hmm. like a pop music or rock metal music education. Uh, and uh, every year, with the first year with the new students, we just you know we talk a, a little bit with the two teachers, uh, Richard Lee and me. And we talk with the students a bit about, you know, what inspires you to uh, play music or why did you want to go to this school? And then <clears throat> usually I, I explain a bit about when I was uh, in an elementary school and uh, there was this uh, classmate that I had and he had an older sister. And uh, she was like into alternative music. And back then it was all like uh, you could, you could, you know, buy cassette tapes or, you know, uh copy them copy cassette tapes from somebody else you know so that's what we did and uh i think through this guy or his sister i think i i um learned about bands like uh green day and offspring and guns and roses metallica and that was like late elementary school like 12 or yeah no even even in in grade six i think around okay. nine years old okay and i was really drawn to the energy of uh like the high high singing of this uh this guy from offspring and uh you know distortion guitars it was like yeah yeah mm. kind i think it resonated with my you know high energy levels or something mm -hmm. um must have been something like that um and next to this i um i also recently kind of uh realized how much of an impact this movie back to the future made Oh, on I me. love that movie. Yeah, <laughs> it's. I mean, the, yeah, I, we, I think you too, but I've seen it when I was a kid, you know, and mm -hmm. it's this great story about, you know, this guy uh, and he's, he's being bullied and, uh, you know, it's, it was also some kind of uh, 
similar stuff that was happening to me at some point in, in elementary school, so I could you know, relate to him. Mm -hmm. But he also had this, you know, this skateboard, you know, and he was skateboarding yeah. away from, <laughs> from him and then, you know, getting back to him, at him. And uh, I think that's also why I uh, started to do a lot of skateboarding. No, oh, funny. Uh, and, <laughs> of course, this very important scene where he is in 1955 and he starts playing the guitar on stage like it's 1985 you know yeah and he's like making music from the future and the people are there are not understanding what he's doing on the guitar you know i, I thought that was so cool yeah, it's like he's <laughs> playing music from the future you know and uh maybe that would be why uh i also you know like to explore and see if i can make or co combine sounds and m maybe make a new sound or something that sounds distinguishable from other music. I yeah, don't know. you're drawn to making new stuff, right? I, I guess so. Yourself. That's what at least what I'm attempting to do. And uh, it might have its origins, you know, if, in seeing that scene. I don't, <laughs> I'm not for funny. sure. Yeah. And then also next <clears throat> to that, uh, uh, even though I am really, I was really bad uh, at stuff like physics uh, at school, but I'm very interested in, you know, the, the recent developments in quantum mechanics and stuff like that, um, which maybe also comes from, you know, this early seeing this movie about time travel and, yeah, um, yeah. and those topics, you know, about, you know, physics and, and how, how things, you know, uh, uh, how you say, uh, you know, you you could ask yourself how real is real. Remember that you gave me that book? Oh, yeah. Do you still have that I book? I still have it. Oh, okay. I recently, uh, I, I took it with me to the cabin, actually, mm. to look up stuff and, and see if I could, you know, get some more inspiration from it. Yeah. It's it's a quite an old book, but still yeah. an interesting read. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I mean, matter and energy and everything related to the whole field of physics that's just completely mind-blowing and I absolutely do not understand the slightest <laughs> bit of it but I am I am interested by the, the general concepts of what they're trying sure, to yeah. trying to prove or trying to figure out and uh, yeah I, I believe I guess that also has uh, you know to do with with that movie <laughs> yeah that's where it has its origins I guess yeah that's funny that's one of those things that we definitely never spoke about but no that it, if I have to name one favorite movie of all time, like consider how big of an impact it had on my life, it must have, it, it is that movie in all sudden. And like, would it be for the same reasons as I, I mentioned? So. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's just on exciting on so many levels. Indeed, it sparks the interest and, and kind of the intellectual part with all that uh, time travel stuff, like yeah. you just said. And indeed, it has some relatable characters. And yeah, yeah it's just, and it's just very well made, you know. It's, uh, yeah. Um, even the, I, I love the music as well, which is kind of, uh, I, I mean, there's some rock music and some mm -hmm. more film score kind of stuff. Um, yeah. And to comment on the, what I find interesting about this whole, uh, uh, um, forget the word now, uh, quantum mechanics, and yeah. quantum computing and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, so like even if you see some podcasts where different scientists who are really into the matter uh, matter <laughs> uh, discuss this stuff, then even it seems like they don't really understand it. Right? It's, <laughs> yeah. such a it's so mind blowing and it's so it's uh, so far away from our uh, linear time, our, our observation of reality yeah. and, and and linear time, and our whole world is, I think based or constructed on that on how we how we how our brains compute the world yeah or something like that yeah exactly and it's very interesting to to see or or maybe you know assume or maybe even prove that some of those things are not actually at all in yeah. line with how we perceive the world yeah and i just find it very interesting yeah me too yeah it's one of those questions it's like how like it is obvious i think that our reality how we process it is definitely not very close to whatever reality might be because we're obviously evolved animals and yeah, we're our part main goal is, in is it. yeah is yeah. to survive and to to exactly. create offspring and all that yeah but it is interesting to consider how much like how, what percentage of reality we actually grasp intuitively 
Like it might be, you know, at least in, in, in how I think about it, it could really be on a super large scale. Maybe we only grasp a half percent of, of reality, yeah, we but don't maybe know. more. And that's also what I find interesting is uh, the, the, the concept of accepting that we don't know mm. is something that, uh, you know, uh, whereas I have or used to have a, a you know a tendency to to uh, control the things in my life that I can control you know I feel comfortable with you know structuring and and giving a direction or finding a direction and then you know mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and when it comes to this you know it's it's really you know accepting that you that we don't know anything yeah basically and then to live with that you know um, and if you see I mean. If if I see the you know the recent developments on a global scale regarding you know what, who believes what truth, you know and and how how that works, you know maybe maybe it is because of the you know the, the declining uh, uh, um, belief in in religion in the Western world that things are happening uh, in a way that that people are looking for other things to to hold on to. I don't know that could be, and I think it would be even very uh, human and very natural to do that. Um, but I, I try to, yeah, uh, learn, uh, or, or, uh, how do you say, um, to, to, to be involved with the acceptance of the fact that we don't know anything. Yeah. You know? I find that and also be, be at peace with that. Exactly. Know? Yeah. yeah <clears throat> and it's not always, it's not always successful, you know, but mm -hmm. I, to me, it feels like something that is worth, uh, striving after a bit. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I completely agree. It's. So also, we talked a little bit about uh, mindfulness and meditation in the past because yes. you also kind of uh, yeah. started fooling around with that. Yeah. And kind of jumping off from what you were just saying, like one thing that I've been considering more and more is also this realization that even our own opinions and thoughts are really simply things that arise and they have very little to do with any identity or truth or anything like that and i find that quite yeah. liberating when you can, can kind of accept that because it's, it's even it's, what how you feel or what you think at that moment or even though mm -hmm. you feel the urge to express it you know mm -hmm. it's just it's, yeah. it's just nothing and you know it changes <laughs> yeah it's it's kind of, yeah, yeah exactly yeah it's very interesting yeah especially indeed for characters like us because we do probably have a tendency to have strong uh, opinions, or strong feelings. I think we mm -hmm. share that, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> yeah. No, I, in, indeed, and um, especially also with uh, writing lyrics. You know, we have a, we have a different approach with that, but um, I think I don't know if I can speak on your behalf uh, in this situation. But I, what at least I try to do with writing the lyrics for the for the Outark album is to you know like describe or, or, or uh, uh, find the right words to to sort of uh, s sketch the situation or something and trying to avoid words like that that would give my personal opinion on it you know yeah. or say like it's like this and um, that is my interpretation you know even though that would be fine as well mm -hmm. but uh, I think it suits the music better and also my personal uh, you know what I just said about the search uh, of, of, of you know what is reality or whatever. Um, try to you know like make descriptions or, or mm -hmm. from a third point of view, so to say, mm -hmm. and not necessarily <clears throat> saying like it's this or that or whatever, but more in this descriptive way. Yeah, and you have a more personal angle. I think so. Well, the, yeah. But also not very like. Yeah, that happened to be the case with these first <coughs> albums. But this, it's funny you bring this up because for this uh, new album I'm writing, we, I don't think we spoke much about that either. Not yet, because no. We haven't talked to each other in some time. But um, music wise, it, it went incredibly fast and easy. I'm kind of done with the music and it happened in a couple of weeks. And, you know? and are you now talking about your solo stuff or new no, our ocean no, stuff? No, our ocean stuff. Okay. So you're writing by yourself? Or yeah, with yeah, the yeah. band. Yeah, th that's another large topic, uh, which I'll fill you in about okay. later. War, we can do that now, actually. But uh, yeah, whatever. No, let's keep it a little bit more about you because you're the guest. But <laughs> <laughs> fine. <laughs> um, but uh, regarding lyrics, um, 
I'm also doing something a little bit more like j just the, the topic, the, the basic uh, premise of, the, of, of just what the music is about. It, mm -hmm. it, you know, the first two albums are about very personal things that happened in my life, basically. Yes. So then you already have like this different angle and approach to the lyrics yes. from, you know. Um, but the new stuff is all a little bit more... Um, observational and maybe a little bit more zoomed out and about not so much about my private life or okay. anything like that. And so you've written some lyrics already? Well, I'm in it right now. You mean, okay. And it's still a pretty big struggle because, and I, I think the reason is just because I'm not very uh, trained at it yet, you know? Yeah, I know. It was a big struggle for me as well. No, that, well, so it one just of the takes thing, time. Yeah, one of the things I wanted to ask you, but what I find interesting with with you is that I've always seen you as as someone who's good with uh, uh, with language, with words. Like even yeah. the way you talk, you have access to to kind of a, a little bit of a richer vocabulary than most people. I don't know if you yeah, know that, that might but, be the case, but yeah, that's just in the, in that's I guess my uh, brain wiring. I was good yeah. at languages in school and and history okay. and. Uh, Adrexkunde, what's that? Geography. Geography. Yeah. So those were the things that 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 went quite easy for me, and uh, yeah. even in the for the first four years of the high school um, time, I was uh, in the gymnasium, so I was doing Latin and Greek as well. Okay, that must also help. And eventually, help. it became too difficult, and I okay. I switched to yeah, uh, Fabio regular. Uh, with, without the <clears throat> classic languages, but the languages were always uh, something that I would, yeah, I would be comfortable in in learning that, yeah. as opposed to math, physics, etc. That's interesting because th that's kind of reversed in my case, and yeah. especially languages is some like even just basic spelling and stuff is something I used to be really crap at for a long time, okay. and I kind of picked it up a little bit later in life. Okay. Um, I do have, I think, p probably uh, one positive trait is that I have a strong sense of what words I like. You know, when uh, when it comes to writing lyrics, yeah, I'm very much sound based, and, yeah. and um, but when it comes to constructing sentences, it's just, I I I think it's a little bit of a pitfall for me that I'm just, huh. I don't see, you know, I'm just not naturally creative with language. Okay, so I might. There's the I don't know how you do it, but it's probably a similar uh, process of like first diving into kind of a world of metaphors and descriptors and and all yeah. that before you putting it into words. That part is quite easy for me, but then mm. when I have to capture it into words, and then especially something I realize that I struggle with is all the different um, criteria it has to meet because I'm doing often like this, these rhyming schemes like A, B, A, uh, C yeah. or whatever. You need to get the and phrasing right. You need to get the phrasing right. Ah, oh, you meter. just found this awesome word that I want to use but it has just one extra syllable that I cannot yeah. use here. Yeah. Although I, I, I did to... get quite good with that over the okay. course of these albums. Of, like I kind of made the realization that with when you're creative with your timing and your phrasing you can pretty much put any word uh, or any sentence in any uh, space, yeah. right? Like it's just if you're good with that. Um, but still, yeah. Um, so there's that, the rhyming, and then of course the dynamics of the song and the meaning of the song, or at least the meaning it has to you and that you convey that. So yeah, that's where I often get stuck with lyrics. Then I have this idea and it's, and also I'm, I'm, I'm curious if you have that as well, is that lyrics are obviously, uh, quite condensed. You mm -hmm. have to package a lot of, of what you want to say in very limited yeah. space. And I find that hard as well. Okay. That is something that was not too hard for me. Because hmm. I kind of I kind of would, would get, you know, when I was, when I, this was actually for the first Out Dark album, it was the first time that I would write lyrics for like mm -hmm. a full album, you know? I mean, and when I was uh, younger, I, I maybe would write a song or something or you know it's for somebody else or whatever uh that would have uh a, a lyrics but I've not not uh done it much at all and now i uh, for the first time was able to you know see how that process would go and uh you know how i can be a little bit impatient or like to work fast you know and and this i i experienced quickly that um as opposed to writing music if i would sit down behind the laptop 
and I was like, okay, now I'm gonna write some lyrics. Then, now I know it takes me at least half an hour to get from, you know, like, earth level into lyric world level, yeah, that, and then dive into it, and yeah. then you'll find a certain flow, or maybe not, but usually I would find some flow, and see like, oh wait, now, but now I have to maybe check that book, and then find a sentence or write words, and maybe sometimes you need to look up a synonym or whatever. Yeah. And um, and then you're like, okay, I'm, I'm at work now, and, yeah. and then things start to flow. But still, you know, from starting point to, to finishing point, it's a completely, uh, 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 you can't know beforehand how long it's going to take. No. And it's also a bit like that with, with writing music, or maybe from, from start to, you know, end product, mixed and mastered end product. But with lyrics, it's even it's even more unpredictable yeah, how, right. how that will go. But and I'm, it took I'm me more curious. time than than I would like. Yeah. Even though I th I think it was probably done within a month or four or five or something. Oh, that's still pretty long. Uh, yeah, not of course not working forty hours a week on it, but <laughs> right. uh, yeah. you get the idea yeah, yeah. of you know like, okay, have to like have the like the storyline of the album and then the songs need to the lyrics need to fit sort of the, the general story of the mm -hmm. album and then um, yeah just finding the right words <clears throat> the right sentences also mm -hmm. you know that it would still be uh, a, a more abstract or general uh, writing that people can relate to but you know there's also the dimension of my personal experience in there mm -hmm. and there's a dimension of, of uh, quantum mechanics in there and there's a dimension of meditation in there so these things that would be important to me uh, regarding this this album should should be you know able to to see at least for myself. Yeah. And uh, um, so yeah, if you have if you put up some criteria for yourself uh, and you want to meet those standards, mm -hmm. you know, you want to meet them at the highest uh, possible level. Yeah, it's just gonna take some time. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but nevertheless, very. Uh, happy to also now be able to express myself vocally. Yeah, right. Next to playing guitar, yeah. But that is interesting to hear. I think there are actually many more similarities in in how we approach it and how we experience the the whole lyric writing than we thought. Then, because that sounds Probably. very familiar. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, and also to to react to what you just said about it taking time. That was indeed one of my uh, kind of bigger realizations as well that you you have to allow it basically right you have to make the time to just get into that zone or whatever you want to call it and uh, for creativity to start happening basically yeah but what i'm curious about is is of, of course like you just said that's a, the, very much the same with writing music but we've been doing that for so long that i i think just because the skill is just much more uh, developed. Yeah, it, it's also much easier to just. Um, you can well, ask. You make can make an estimation. Like, yeah, okay, I'm going to write a yeah, song, exactly. and then you can estimate roughly. Going to take me about this much yeah. time. This and this and this needs to be done. Yeah. I generally know now that exactly. I that that it takes approximately this much yeah. time. And you have so much like yeah. over the course of the years, you also learn so many of these little uh, strategies of the, when you get stuck or in in any way like. Yeah. It, it, that almost never happens to me anymore, and I'm sure that's the same for you. Because yeah, right. Uh, yeah, exactly. And then if you run into a problem or something while writing lyrics, you know, um, you're like, ah, you know, you so you have the abstract idea of what you want to say, but you can't find the right words or whatever. And then for me personally, you know, I'm not that good at just sitting at a chair. <laughs> at a desk behind a computer. I find that also really you know? difficult so, about lyrics. So in your brain there's happening so much. Yeah. And the computer is a is a, a very uh yeah, I just say a very useful tool mm -hmm. to, to work on, also to look things up, everything. So, you know. But yeah, I mean if I'm in my room and I, I can sit I can do that for may, maybe an hour and then I just need to get up and, and you yeah. know walk around a bit and then yeah, get same. back to it. That's also why I like to <coughs> kind of 50-50 of the lyrics also just walking around because also because and this I find also interesting. It's like I for me, it's like I'm pretty good at concentrating uh, for long periods of time with most of the things that I do. Mm -hmm. But what I realized is that I need to have something to keep me focused. 
And when you're writing, for example, you have a guitar in your hands. And you you're constantly, music. Yeah. Yeah, and you constantly hear the feedback of what you're playing. And that is enough to me uh, for me to keep me in that flow state, basically. Yeah. Yeah. But with lyrics, it's so much more abstract because it's very easy to spin off into a different direction, right? Like, especially if you don't look at a computer screen, but you're just walking yeah. and writing. Like, at one moment, you might be thinking about the lyrics, and next moment, you realize you're thinking about something completely different. Yeah. And I find that, like, I, I wish that would be easier somehow. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, you, you, you would want to have some tool, like a futuristic, like, glass thingy here. Like, you, you, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, save this sentence, you know, and then it just saves <laughs> something that you came up with and you can use it later or something. Yeah. yeah. Well, in, in some sense, we're kind of already halfway there with our yeah, mobile that's phones, right? right? But, yeah. but it's also kind of a little bit annoying to walk around with your phone all the time, of course, but... Yeah, yeah. yeah every time I do that, I find myself annoying as well, even though mm -hmm. sometimes you just need to remember something or whatever. And, mm -hmm. uh, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, if, if you would go to the woods and walk, you know, uh, I would guess that, that you know you would want to think, but also enjoy the nature environment and not yeah, yeah, right. not deal with a phone or any other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this whole thing made me think of of something I wanted to talk to you about. Anyways, mm -hmm. that is, uh, I think I also alluded to it in the description of of, of the YouTube video or some someplace else. That um, I learned a lot from you when it comes to composition. And it has a lot to do with the, the stuff we just talked about. Okay. And just to paint a quick picture, like back in the day when we first joined uh, in Exivius, yeah. you remember I was one of those guitar players who had a shit ton of riffs laying around. And sometimes I, was, I managed to copy paste some stuff together, but it didn't have songs. Like pretty much I no songs. I don't really agree because no? the first or the second or both uh, Exivius demos that were made before the lineup with mm. Steph and Robin and me I think those were not those were not necessarily poorly structured songs or anything mm. they, they, they were there was not that bad yeah okay. depending on, on of course your kind of your your point of reference I mean within the context of maybe more death like uh, or you know what's considered appropriate in metal it was maybe okay because that's a little bit more copy paste than maybe uh, you yeah know, more contemporary yeah, maybe right, right. Right. but um and of course you maybe you didn't you saw more or uh, more of my final songs than all the riffs I had laying around on my hard drive, right? Okay, yeah, so you're saying that, you know, the, the songs that ended up on that album are just actually the tip of the iceberg of yeah. all the riffs that were laying around. Exactly. And yeah. that were not, that you couldn't fit into yeah. some sort of song. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. And I would always get stuck. And that, yeah. like, if there's one thing I took away from uh, the composition studies that we did, it's it's that, like, to, yeah. to, uh, anyway, so what I, what I quickly realized when we started working is that you didn't have that problem. No. Like you, just from yeah, from as far back as I can remember, you were always good at like forming some type of plan of what you wanted to do within a song. Then you would stick to the plan. If needed, you would change the plan, yeah. and there would be a song. Very decisive and yeah, I think that's the right word that you mentioned there because I uh, <clears throat> uh, I think my character allows me to be to have developed over the years a, a, a quite a good skill of decision making but so is, is that, I think that helps with uh, but was that natural it, for you that decision making and has that always been there or is that something you, you uh, developed i'm not sure of course but if i if i remember let's maybe b before i was actually becoming really active with music uh like around age 13 14 mm -hmm. when i was I was playing, I started to play guitar when I was 11, but I became active with bands and really serious with m music around m age 14. Um, but since age six, I was always a very uh, fanatic uh, football player. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, at some point, um, maybe around 11 or 12 or something, the, the coach of the team had decided to put me in the position of a attacking midfielder. Yeah, please. And uh, the attacking midfielder is a person who coordinates the attack. So I didn't know back then, but apparently he thought that it would be good for me to be on that position because 
uh, I would see opportunities uh, that other players might not see. So I could coordinate, you know, and if I would have the ball, I remember I would point like, run there, you know, and because I would see okay. the space and, you know, try to coordinate so he, the attack. So you saw that, like, kind of, um, uh, what do you do? the seed of that kind of behavior in you i guess in... yeah i mean that's that's if i think about it now that you know that apparently that was what i was good at on the field back then mm. uh, and um it i'm making the the jump now like i'm tying these two topics together mm. because i i believe that also has to to uh do with like seeing opportunity yeah knowing what is possible and what is not possible and and uh, coordinating that exactly and, and yeah. you could say that for songwriting, it would could be, in a way, the same mm -hmm. as you as long as you have a how do you say kader, yeah, uh, like a reference reference and... like um, uh, within this song. This song is about this and that, and uh, so this and this and that fits that idea, and this and this that does not fit the idea. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to stick with what fits, and then within that context, quickly make some decisions about how uh, to go over the the actual writing and and mm -hmm. what kind of rules you would make for yourself or not. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then I would put my, you know, my uh, ADHD brain to work, <laughs> and uh, you know, because yeah, I, um, it's fun to, for me, to, you know, to dive into it and then see, um, you know, how fast I can make my um, brain work and 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 come to a satisfying result or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what I'm, I'm not sure if it makes sense the... this whole story, but no, it it does. And for me personally, it's also interesting to to. to think about the fact that I also have a knack for uh, for forming plans and conclusions quite fast. Like if I, you know, kind of a natural problem solving uh, skill or something. If yeah. you see the pieces laying around, I can usually solve puzzles quickly. Something I really like as well. Yeah, yeah. problem solving. And, yeah. and I, th I think now, like after working with you for years and seeing how you do that, that really uh, rubbed off on me. And then also studying composition where it was kind of the, yeah. the bigger topic was basically about that, at least to me. Um, so now I can also approach it like that hmm. and where yeah. it's no longer a struggle. I think where I used to get stuck is is just when perfectionism gets the better of you, uh, better of you, the yeah. best of you, whatever. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, and for a long time, I remember I used to have this feeling that if I didn't struggle for it, it whatever I made wouldn't be worth uh, anything because, uh, okay. like, oh, if it came that easily, it. <laughs> yeah, if it came that easily, can it cannot possibly be any good? But that is just very untrue. There's, it, it's almost actually the opposite. Yeah, the whole concept of good and bad is something that we could talk for hours about. Right. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so you. You're saying that actually you needed to sort of uh, get to the realization point that you know it can also be uh, an, an, a smooth process, and then exactly, it can yeah. still be music that you really like and yeah. you want to play uh, yeah. and, and record. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, I, re I remember this one point, and might have talked about it before. Is that was just one of these points of uh, of realization that that I remember was when I uh, years after we made. Uh, either the first or second uh, Exivius album. Yeah. I had one of those evenings or whatever that I went back on an old hard disk and listened to old <clears throat> ideas. Yeah. And then I found like, I don't know, like six or seven versions of one song. And I just listened to them. And it was so long ago that I forgot all of the previous versions. I just right, remember right. the last one. Yeah. And when I listened to the first one, I immediately knew like, oh, that was the best, best one. It was the best idea. Uh -huh. and I just apparently I kept changing and changing and changing. And, Ultimately, it you know it can result in something that's just too, you know, you've overthought, or overthought, yeah, over, over puzzled or whatever. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I think um, in my, I think maybe for me personally, uh, next to you know the decision making and uh, yeah, you know, coordinating or structuring, it was uh, maybe also that's where my impatience would would have a like a positive uh mm. thing. don't look okay no no we're done and then so <laughs> then sometimes you would get I back to something that. yeah and you're like no we have to get back to the drawing table and i'm like no dude we're done <laughs> <laughs> i'm fine yeah. with it now you know let's not you know let's move to the next step yeah but you know if you're with the group you know mm -hmm. everybody has to stand behind that the product you know and mm -hmm. uh 
so of course I had to, you know, uh, 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 how do you say, uh, uh, keep my impatience back a little bit and, and, and yeah, yeah. grow more patience to in order for you to also get to terms with how that, that the idea would be good yeah. for you as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember some of those sessions when when we were working on something, you know, jamming or behind a computer and remember me just, you know, keeping on just in de detail land, you know, changing minor mm. things and you just getting tired and going away for smoke. And <laughs> yeah. to, to like that, but it's also the opposite way, you know, the, mm. the, the downside of it is that when I record demos now, I, I know that. I am going to have to re-record them properly, you know, for the final. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I decided for myself that if I'm if I'm in writing mode, I'm not in performance mode. So, I if I come up with the riff or something, I just barely learn how to play it and then <laughs> record it. And then, if you look at it half a year later, or I have to, you know, figure figure out my own part again, or maybe explain a part to a, another player, mm -hmm. I'm like, ah, oh, shit, I played so sloppy, I can't even hear what note that is. <laughs> <laughs> I had it just the other week. It was last week with David. It was like it's just uh, explaining him a, a, a thing that I wrote a while ago, and uh, I was just like, "Oh, it's not that." I also don't remember that thing going on. I'm like, I have to okay, let's skip to a different pl place in the song where we have the same riff. Let's hope I played it. I recorded it again and then copy paste it, and then see if we can find it out there. And then eventually, it took like 15 minutes, and we got it. Yeah, yeah. So whereas I'm in initially thinking that I'm working fast and you know I have to re-record anyway, you know, mm -hmm. in this situation is also delaying me a bit in expl explaining it to either myself or somebody else, mm -hmm. like how to play it. Uh, so yeah, there's you know it's always yeah. The, well, that I'm familiar with now as well. Back in the day, indeed, I never had that because when you're struggling on something for so long, it it comes quick. Uh, it comes back quickly because you, the shapes and everything you just remember. Yeah. But now, if if I work so, uh, if I write songs quickly after each other, also it's like even if you go back two songs, I don't know how to play them anymore. You just forget very quickly, right? Yeah. You some, but nevertheless, I mean, we have ears and we can just. I mean, it's not. It, yeah, it's not a problem. It's just yeah. uh, the the way things go. If you make that decision or this decision, yeah. yeah. It's what fine. I do, by the way, these days, uh, to, to react on what you just said, that you have to re-record parts, I just make sure to, and you do that too, right? You have a good interface to plug into it, and so you can always just use whatever you recorded for demos on, on albums, yeah, right? Yeah, it frequently ha it, it happens, usually with uh, extra layers, something oh, like... Oh, right, I remember you doing that. Main, yeah. main guitars, uh, yeah, and it also depends whether you're recording a DI signal or not, because... Uh, right. Um, not always using plugins for the sound. Sometimes mm -hmm. I can record uh, directly from the amp and then uh, use some uh, impulse response for the cab simulation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I still do that. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, I really play when I demo. I really play way too sloppy to okay, have it yeah. on the on the final album. And that's funny uh, because that's one of these things where my perfectionism still gets me to at least get it to a level that I find find it acceptable to listen to for myself. And what right. I found out is that usually that is still pretty sloppy and I do it quickly actually, but it's good enough for records. But, and, but, but that I think yeah, is more to do. You, you, because you're a very talented guitar player. Well, thank you. Much more that, than but... I am. And I've come to realize that that the, the guitar is basically some sort of, you know, vessel for me to express myself. Mm -hmm. and it happened to be in my room when I was eight, you know, and uh, <laughs> it became my thing. Even though I like uh, the physical uh, exercise of drumming probably way more than playing guitar. Yeah. Um, but it's it's a tool to express myself. Yeah. And, and, and even though, you know, I'm I'm a fairly skilled guitar player nowadays, but not the natural the really naturally talented guitar players that like you and David are. It's it's different. Mm. Yeah. And I don't mind because that's you know, I'm happy to be able to to demo and write songs and even though this this note is not you know coming through right, I still find the demos acceptable enough. Mm -hmm. But that's also because you know I tend to get impatient because I really want to hear the end result of what I made. Yeah, yeah. So I don't mind if the note is off somewhere, uh, or, or 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 you know, inaudibly played or incorrectly played. You know, uh, you know if it if it makes the sound off, then of course I have to do it again. But yeah, if it's a bit sloppy, you know, then okay, because I really want to hear what 
how it feels. Because I can't wait until that moment when you export your first version and then you can walk away from the screen. Yeah. And then listen to, because then it becomes a whole, you know? Yeah, That's yeah. the first time it really becomes a whole be, instead of all the sections that you are programming or recording. Exactly. Yeah, that's just yeah. that's just a very uh, how do you say uh, satisfying moment for me. Yeah, you know, same. And I think where you know one of the things I also learned again partially from you in school and all that and, and, and just experience is that there's a reason. Like if you make the analogy to to like a, a painter or something who's first just with you know with a pencil, just very roughly and quickly sketching something. Mm -hmm. That is essentially what you're doing at that point. You're not yeah. going to go in and sketch something and then make a very detailed eye, for example, yeah. because then you're stuck with it. You know, you spend so much time and energy on that, so you want to keep that eye. Mm -hmm. And that is very similar yeah. with music. And it's also something that comes up frequently when I kind of teach songwriting. It's such a big pitfall for many people, especially, I think, these days with all these tools that we have of uh, drum program. Yeah, you're going like. to go into production so easily. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Details and production, and then you have this very polished 10 second clip of music, and then you get stuck. Because yeah. what the hell do you Maybe do Maybe that helps me as well, because I'm not an, uh, an engineer, you know? I'm not a mm. producer uh, in, the, in, the, the, in the professional sense of the word, you know? Mm -hmm. I produce music, mm -hmm. but I'm not a mixing engineer, mm -hmm. because... Um, uh, for mixing uh, choices, it, it's it's detail work. It's you need yeah. to vary, and that's not. Um, uh, well, yeah. How should I say? It's it's. Not, I could maybe get good at it if I, if I would you know actually study it or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I know a bit about it, sure. of course, through experience. But my focus is also on, on the HKU where we studied was mostly composition and not yeah. production. Yeah, and I think. I guess it also makes it easier for me, so I don't have to produce it like it's yeah. going to be a final uh, end yeah. result for an album. Can't do that anyway, so I'm not going to get buttered. You know, I know basic plugins that get me the sounds that I need to, yeah. and I can put it in balance. You know, yeah. Um, but the standard uh, uh, drum computer sounds that uh, David, for instance, or Yoris would come up with, you know, I, I'm not doing that. It's no. just basic sounds and just a bit of compression. Yeah. Around, yeah. yeah. It's funny that you bring that up because I think that is the reason that over time I started doing less and less production and mixing as I'm writing. And now I got to a point where I write one guitar part. You yeah. know, I don't allow myself anything more. Maybe here and there some, if it just doubles a melody, which is so good, then it's not really, yeah, it's more to remember the idea or something. But I really limit myself. And just I don't one mix guitar part and, yeah. and then you send it to the others. Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah. And, and they then, add stuff. Well, that's how we did it last time. But now I want to first also have the vocal in place and the lyrics. So that that is at least complete. Like melody and sense. harmony. And yeah. then we can add the, the rest of the yeah. stuff. Makes sense. And I have some very interesting stuff also, which might be a little bit long to talk about now, but but we can talk about it later with, because it's super exciting to me. Is that I'm going to work with uh, Florian for... Um, basically uh, for the new Our Oceans album. For Amaya? Yeah. Oh, and, okay. Uh, or highly likely. We had a long call the other day. And, yeah, uh, I, I, and that's a nice guy, man. Yeah, he, well, you know, I know you know him and, and yeah. uh, appreciate and admire him as oh, well definitely. for his skills. Yes, he is uh, insane. Exactly. And um, yeah, just the, in, in short, the story was I was so, um, I felt so much in love with those uh, Silver Chair albums lately. Oh, right. And they have, uh, a really big component of those albums is kind of traditional uh, orchestration of like real orchestra uh -huh. orchestration. Yeah. And so then I that got me thinking like, hmm, maybe I want to do something with that. Because previously I always thought like, well, that's maybe for Dimo Borgir. And <laughs> right. Because if you do it in, in Prague, it can go wrong very easily, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying um, to picture Im or images songs that I know from Our Oceans now. Yeah, right. <laughs> Where would that be going? Would that be a good well, idea? Exactly. <laughs> and, and that, that is where we also kind of, uh, again, I'll keep it short for now, is where we settled is that we're not going to go with traditional kind of strings kind of type of thing, but more maybe make up our own little type of uh, small uh, 
orchestra, if you will, but maybe mm. of more exotic instruments, some some weird combination of like a sitar dude and and uh, harp and you know just out of different worlds. I see. Yeah. And just to have some diff interesting textures and right. you know more just. Yeah, because that was something, um, anyways, that the last album we did was uh, was very sparse in, in terms of layering and, and extra sounds. And there yeah. was a choice. I just, you know. That yeah, was... I knew you were making that choice. And even, even still, you, you guys managed to get these intense tension spans in the songs, you know. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you you've proven... Uh, to me, at least, that you that you can make it work like okay, that as well, which is with, yeah. with really compelling, dramatic, over the top almost tension yeah. spans, you know. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you don't but, need all the extra things no, you, necessarily. Yeah, th th those those are nice challenges, anyways, right? Yeah. It's like what we briefly talked about as well as you, these. It, it's cool, like creatively, to just have these uh, kind of different criteria you put up for yourself, and that was one of them for that album. It's just yeah. sparse. N minimum amount of layering yeah but for this next one i want to do something uh, the complete opposite basically i want to just right. decorate the hell out of it <laughs> go baroque <laughs> yeah well <laughs> not go, that go not box that. style on it but that's also <laughs> why like florian is such a natural choice for that because he's obviously also really good at more contemporary and modern texturing and and use of harmony and yeah. everything so i'm incredibly curious what that will uh, yeah, what yeah. that will bring. Maybe good to mention for the people who know, who don't know, Florian Meyer mm. is a, he's a German um, composer and guitar player, and he lives in uh, Rotterdam. And uh, he, uh, I've seen him play once. He managed to 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 give a concert in the Musikgebouw aan het Ei uh, in Amsterdam uh, with a, the full Metropole Orchestra mm. and his own metal band. Yeah. So that was something that I was extremely excited to see uh you know because he has a metal background as a vocalist and as a guitar player mm -hmm. but he uh he also skilled himself in uh, uh, uh spanish guitar or say flamenco guitar yeah he and actually studied that also, he studied right? that yeah. and he studied composition yeah and he's a very skilled uh, uh composer and orchestrator f yeah for also classical stuff so. yeah he also That's a very the, nice choice to, to to collaborate with him. Yeah, and yeah. give him some amount of freedom as well. Yeah. And, and that's also, I think for me, I'd love to have someone, um, I'd love to have more of an element of surprise within the music I make myself. Because if, mm. you know, the, the kind of a little bit of a pitfall is if you are the initiator and kind of the main dude behind something, you know exactly what it's going to be. You know, of course not, you know, you're still going to work with people and they yeah, yeah. come up with creative decisions for drum parts and everything. And yeah, but and the of general idea. Yeah. But yeah, I, it, it's very exciting to me to imagine that. Yeah, and, and I'm also very exciting. Ex, uh, it's exciting to me to not know too much about what he's going to do, you know, just give him a lot of freedom and just yeah. waiting to see what comes back. That yeah, seems see, very cool. See how he interprets. But, yeah, uh, but we'll see things, what, yeah. <laughs> where it goes. Well, he has a lot of experience. Yeah. And uh, personally, I believe his, especially his orchestral uh, stuff that he that he is uh, either arranging or, or composing, it's uh, it's marvelous. So, yeah. Yeah, me too. Very curious to see what he would come up with. Yeah, yeah. me too. Yeah. So uh, in the chat, it's it's quite quiet, but Yuma says hi. So hi Yuma, Yuma hi. if you're still <laughs> if you're still watching. Uh, how long have we been going? Where do we see the time actually? Uh, oh man, I'm so. I can just check check the regular time. What's the time? Oh, here, fifty three minutes. Okay. So that's that, good. That, that anyway, fine. so we jumped all over. I just wanted to get a little bit of background, but then we jumped all that, which is all yeah. fine. But maybe let's uh, structure it a little bit for the listeners. So um, broad strokes. So we did Exivius together, which is uh, quite a, some time ago. Yeah. Um, you were also like one of the, you know, we were the composing dudes basically behind that project. Yeah. I tried to, at first I tried to match the type of things you were doing in order to make the songs yeah fit fit on an album that's actually kind of fun that. to jump into a little bit because we um it, it was a fun like get how we got together it's like we already talked a little bit about where i was coming from like i had 
I didn't know ass about songwriting, basically, just mm -hmm. made riffs and whatever. Yeah. But also, I had a very peculiar uh, background in, in music theory because I just taught it myself. And there was a lot of things that I knew about scales and stuff, and then a, a lot of other stuff missing. Yeah. And I remember getting together with you and Steph and Robin, and you guys were much more traditionally schooled. You could read notation and you could talk to each other like, oh, let's move those notes back a 16th and those four. Yeah, in the beginning, I was like, what the hell are you talking names, about? Names of chords or how yeah. certain notes that he would be playing and I would be playing, how, how, how you would call them, basically. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, yeah. In, and in the beginning, that was uh, quite intimidating for me. But I can imagine in um, from your perspective was... Um, a little bit like different because you had you you had that which you were very good at, but you, as you just said earlier, you were not very much a guitar player. Guitar player, exactly. whereas Xavier <clears throat> is very much guitar music. Yeah, because when we when we first uh, got together and I, when I first heard uh, these demos for the for the uh, the debut album, I was like, oh shit, you know, this is this is interesting. I was back then, I was really into looking for combinations of styles, especially the fusion-y stuff combined with metal. And that was exactly what you were doing. Mm. And I was like, whoa, this is interesting, you know? And uh, I was really excited about the idea, but I was definitely not a lead guitar player. So I, I remember I was like, ah, oh, shit, now I really have to study and work on my lead playing because it was quite uncomfortable for me. And I remember my, my first my first takes on, on what later became the song Azurim. Mm. It was, oh, it was hor I, I was, I was, I was thinking that I would be doing all right, you know, and record myself and then mm. play it back. It's like, oh, this is not nearly, this is gonna be such, an, uh, such a gap between what you were able to do and what I was able to do. But yeah, just, you know, put some hours in it. Mm -hmm. And it's not so natural for me to put that ma many hours into, you know, studying a certain thing on the, on the instrument, but I was, I was, it was also fun, you know, because it's yeah. also, it's not just practicing, but it's also learning to hear or learning to feel like, oh, wait, as long as you um, practice playing over a certain uh, chord progression, you, you develop more natural ways or, you know, you can maybe sometimes uh, move out of your position on the neck and then trust your instincts that you're going to be somewhere that sounds good, you know? Yeah, that was a, that was an interesting process, but um, yeah, when it comes to to actually the technicalities of playing guitar, that was a big difference back then. Um, so, if you're talking about you know, that's how you viewed that first period. You're like, okay, I'm working with people now who know how to talk about music or, mm -hmm. or how to, you know, um, to me that was already a bit uh, more natural. Whereas I was just like, okay, it felt. It, it, it's not necessarily the, the correct interpretation, but I would I would put myself on second fiddle, you know, that I was playing second <laughs> fiddle. Mm -hmm. And that was fine because mm -hmm. I was I was comfortable with that because I was not a lead player at all. So mm -hmm. I was comfortable with doing the rhythm stuff. Um, and then I started to learn it. And then eventually I became comfortable enough to to re record uh, the, the solos or the improvisations that that came on the first album yeah, yeah. it took some time yeah mm -hmm. it's funny like when i still frequently get people uh who, who who've never seen exivius and they just assume that all the solos are mine also yours uh -huh. it's kind of funny um anyway so yeah that is, is uh that was just a very quick yeah uh, exivius, and if you um, briefly look back to that whole the starting period, like from from two thousand five until the first release of two thousand nine, mm -hmm. it was just a really nice period of exploring uh, how we could combine these styles, you know. And it was just mm -hmm. a very uh, interesting time for all of us, I think, to develop such a. Even though it was not completely new, but still, to us, you know, it was an, some sort of new combination or thing that yeah. we really wanted to to get working, you know. Yeah, it was yeah, fun. Get it to work. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, I, definitely, really, really a good time uh, for de developing just as a person and a, as a musician. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Um, if we focus a little bit on your uh, career, then the next big thing for you was Dodecahedron, right? Yeah. 
So maybe talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that was, that must have been around 2011 when uh, I was already uh, already for some years already since 2006 actually I was uh, debating an idea for a band that would be quite extreme and would have uh, uh, influences of uh, my then newfound appreciation for certain black metal music. I was listening a lot to Emperor, I remember, and um, I wanted to see, because I like the certain atmosphere things, you know, and, and Emperor was also working with uh, orchestral stuff sometimes. I was, mm -hmm. like, was experimenting with that at first. But I was like, if I'm doing that, and if I'm trying to also make slightly atonal decisions, uh, and have these, uh, or I had this really, you know, crappy orchestral plugin that I used then. It's like, yeah, but if I'm doing this, it's going to sound like that, like like Emperor or Dimmu or whatever. And I didn't want that. And uh, by then, we also already started studying at HKU. And uh, then I found uh, this other classmate of ours, Joris Bonis. And when I got to know him, I was amazed about this whole world of uh, sound synthesis that I had never, ever heard about. Uh, and I didn't even know that it was possible to, you know, program patches and that, that would generate sounds. And it was so cool. And I was like, whoa, I'm probably going to have to use those types of sounds uh, instead of orchestral sounds uh, as, as atmospheric layers in the music. Uh, to come up with some something that would have some sort of uh, distinguishable quality or something, you know? And Joris was very excited about it as well. And he also happened to play guitar. And he also happened to have a metal background. So that's where where it started, you know? That's mm -hmm. that's that's where we we just sat evenings sometimes not generating stuff that he was doing. And I would be writing songs uh, at home later before, for instance, and, and, and then seeing what... What I'm, I'm gonna have to have a sound here that is high pitched alien esque whatever, <laughs> and I would have this giant file of of patched uh, or sounds from his patches that we recorded, and I would mark all the sections with all kinds of references that I, if I would read it, then I would see oh that's that type of sound, and mm. then I would look it up, and then copy paste it into my uh, composition file, and then. Nine out of ten times, it would just work instantly. And sometimes <laughs> I would have to, you know, change it a bit or filter it or pitch it or whatever. But that's how we managed to get that sound, you know. And then in 2011, I think I uh, we we got this lineup as as it as it was in the, in the beginning, with heel on vocals and the Ipa on bass and mm -hmm. Jasper on drums. And um, at first, it was just about making an album. We were not sure about playing live. But we ended up doing that eventually. Um, not that much, but we did. And um, we were also lucky to get uh, signed on this record uh, label, Season of Mist, with uh, with help from uh, our mutual friend, uh, Eula Garrett, mm -hmm. um, who helped me get signed with Dodek Idron on the label. And uh, from there on, uh, you know, I got to experience for the first time how it works if you have a record label with a promotion department mm -hmm. working for you, so to say, mm -hmm. helping you get that record, uh, get noticed. And then it also depends on how well the press will be picking it up. But for the debut album, it worked pretty, pretty good, actually. I was especially amazed by the fact that we became album of the month in, I think it was the Italian Rock Hard, probably. I remember something. It was an like Italian that, magazine. Yeah. And uh, yeah, apparently they were, they were so enthusiastic about it that they made it mm -hmm. album of the month. I didn't expect that kind of reception, you know? It was quite an extreme album. And um, I thought, yeah, it might get noticed in the niches, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but but yeah, it, it, it got a bit more attention than I uh, was expecting. So that happened to, you know, put that band a bit on the map and eventually allowed us to play uh, a festival in Iceland and uh, on uh, Inferno Festival in Norway, which is like a music festival and industry conference as well. Mm -hmm and um, in Belgium and uh, a lot of shows in the Netherlands or a lot yeah hmm. a bunch um, yeah so that is how that you know came came to be and uh, yeah. yeah and so then um, maybe to move forward in time a little bit to what you're doing now yeah so uh, for, for those of uh, 
of, of the viewers who, who haven't heard your new project, band. Uh, how do you pronounce it in English? Autark? I would say Autark, yeah. Okay. A-U-T-A-R-K-H. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the correct spelling, uh, if you use it in a sentence, you'd have to <laughs> use the C instead of the K, of course. Uh, okay. Autark with a C. Um, when I was looking for band names for this project, which is basically a sort of uh, uh, an evolvement of what I was doing with Dodecahedron, because a bunch of those songs uh, that are on the album are originally were meant for the third Dodecahedron album. Um, and then I was searching for a band name for a long time because I wanted it to be a bit more con compact than the word Dodecahedron. Um, but yeah. You know, so many names have already been used, and mm. I would try to find something that could not get me into <laughs> legal trouble eventually. Yeah. And then I found this perfect word that I thought, you know, like autark. Oh, that's cool because it can be interpreted as a as a term for, uh, 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 you know, like a, a, a evil ruler. You know, like a, no, no, that's not the right word. Like a, a tyrant or an, uh, uh, yeah, a despot, tyrant, tyrant. Right. You know, like a evil leader, so to say. Yeah. Um, but if you look at, you know, the Greek origin of the word, you can, you can see it's, it's auto and archi. So it's basically, mm. uh, a governing system, which is about yourself. So to govern yourself or to be free in, in, in the realms of your okay. own personal uh, yeah, that's uh, space interesting or with, something. With that, the concept you have. That's how, that's how I came to think about that word quite mm. quickly. Um, and um, uh, the the spelling with a C was already a band in the United States. Oh, so okay. I was very disappointed when I when I looked it up for a second time because I was the first time I didn't find anything, and then somebody mm. said, "Ah, but it exists." Like reminds, no, uh, that reminds me of the Mortal Kombat thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know, but they write it with a K, and like every word that's usually written with a C in that world is written with a K. Ah, so. okay, okay, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so I decided to to use the K because it, uh, in a way, it, it looks. Uh, I don't know. It it, it suits the. Uh, I don't know. It looks a bit harsh. Yeah, aesthetic, the, indeed. Yeah. Aesthetic, aesthetically, and it also worked better for the logo. Cool. Because if I would have to use a C, then it would be like this, uh, and it would not aesthetically match the the logo as it is now, um, as good as as using the K. Yeah. But but yeah. I find it like thinking about band names. I, I maybe we discussed this as well back when you were doing it. Like when when we released the uh, first Our Oceans album, just before the release, I was uh, thinking about changing the band name. I don't know if you remember. Yeah, I remember vaguely. And, yeah, yeah. I got so like self conscious about the fact that like fuck, I'm like here almost like forty years old, and I'm thinking about a name for my <laughs> band, and it's it's it felt like such a, like a teenager oh. thing to do. The, the the finding the band name and finding the album title for the in in the case of Autark were the most difficult things that I had mm. to do. Not the logo, not not yeah, the funny. music, not the lyrics. Even though that was something to yeah. you know learn or or figure out, but the the band name was in place very late. We were already producing <laughs> and yeah. stuff, and the album title was even later because I needed to find mm. like a, a short. A word or a small sentence, at least, How did you that get would it? describe it... every it... of the whole process or whatever. It, would, yeah. it should be connected with everything. Yeah, this it it just took me a long time did, of thinking and just you take come up it with out of the lyrics, or is it just no? A random... It's not. It's not out of the lyrics because I couldn't find it there. Ah. I couldn't find it there because I didn't find anything general enough or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I don't know how or why it came to. When I thought of it, I didn't know, but I was like, yeah, it's about a form in motion. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, <laughs> it's just that it. obvious. Uh, why didn't I think of this uh, yeah. earlier? But I didn't. But yeah, eventually yeah. I was like, yeah, that's just it. And it yeah. fits the... It, it fits. The, uh, oh, I think the artwork actually that Manuel Tinemans made for our album, which is like a, very nice. a poster thing. And... Uh, when we were talking about you know the the concept of the album, he came up with this idea to make a very long uh, 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 image, mm -hmm. and 
that's that, I think that inspired me to eventually find the song title because that's what he's painting also, mm. or, or drawing. Sorry. Mm -hmm. um, so that that must have helped me, yeah, to find the album title. So in uh, in Autark, you also sing basically for the first time, right? Like, or at least professionally. Yeah, I mean, so, I did it with my old band when I was seventeen. I was also yeah, uh, doing that was more shouting. Yeah, right? that like, was uh, just growls and shouts yeah. and uh, and guitar. Yeah. Well, there's still, of course, shouting elements to it, to this, but there's also actual singing and everything in between. So, yeah. uh, talk a little bit about that. Like, how is that going, anyways? I re I remember the last time we actually talked about it, you were a little bit in a in a well, what's the word? Just a little bit of trouble because you had some live shows coming up, and you were like kind of losing your voice sometimes. And yeah, I had very similar and have very similar issues. So, it's, it's, how's that going? Uh, it's a struggle. Mm. It's um, I can't. I'm. Uh, I don't have the feeling yet that I'm in control. Of my voice mm. and that makes me uh, worry a bit sometimes mm -hmm. um, I also think that you know I sort of by accident figured out when I was just um, demoing stuff for uh, for the first uh, Outdark album I kind of stumbled upon the fact that you know, uh, the way that I was for instance screaming high-pitched with a, a different band that I was in on vocals Dr. Doom I was like oh but it actually kind of has a tone and if I can mm. manage to dial down the amount of distortion, maybe I can do these high notes uh, with a with a with a certain amount of distortion. Mm -hmm. And 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 that sound it was actually quite interesting. I was like, oh, maybe I'm capable of doing that. So that's when I started to dive into it as well. Yeah. Um. Then when I recorded the album, it was just uh, energy and getting those things out. Uh, in a in a way that uh, I already felt and knew would not be a sustainable way of doing it for my voice. <laughs> yeah, but I just needed to get that record done, yeah. and then I would have time to develop That's how I did the well. skill to yeah. to uh, make it work. And uh, I have come quite a way already. Uh, I think things are going much better in terms of uh, learning mixed voice, for instance. I am now also um, frequently singing songs uh, uh, that are above my, you know, that, that would end up in my uh, head voice, mm -hmm. um, but go over the range, you know, like the, naturally go over my... Massage you. Yeah, so uh, for instance, I'm, I'm singing uh, along to <laughs> one of my biggest guilty pressures, uh, 30 Seconds to Mars. Oh, yeah. Because what he's he, a good singer, though. He, he, yeah, he's a good singer, and he is constantly in this area in the yeah. choruses. So I constantly have to sense and feel, um, it, can I get the mixed sound or is it going to be head voice sound? And if it's going to be head voice sound, please do not dial in that distortion there because you know you can do that now, even though I'm still uh, quite sure that I'm not doing it in a correct way, but it works. Yeah. Um, and I don't have too much voice tr trouble yet, even though I, I feel I really need to look into the way I'm doing that, that sound. Mm. But I'm noticing now that my my vocal cords are getting stronger, and I can also produce more powerful sounds with my head voice. Mm. Um, the thing is, though, that I can I'm sensing lately that after maybe half an hour of of doing some intense singing, even though it's without distortion, my, my voice is just getting tired earlier than it was before, and uh, which is a, another probably another pointer for me to to you know or. My vocal cord saying like, "Hey, dude, um, we need to get that, some proper training now." Yeah, that's your overall vocal health. Then. Yes, and yeah. I th and if it it feels like it's declining a bit, yeah. and I'm um, getting a bit worried about it. Well, the good thing is that you know I'm, I scream my voice away so many times, and it does recover remarkably okay. quickly if you let it. You know, okay. it's, it's you don't have. I, I think you don't have to be so afraid of it as, as most of those vocal coaches may make it out to be. But okay. It's even the case with nodules and all those things, right? Like in nine out of ten, ten times, if I'm uh, at least from what I hear, it recovers on its own. Like surgery is really something they only do when you're in a hurry, for example, to uh -huh. get back to stage really quickly. But usually, it just heals within a month. So. Okay. So that's good. Yeah. But 
But yeah, it's it's all. But I was thinking relatable. of getting it checked out uh, by a throat doctor because uh, the other day, uh, uh, what was it after our uh, after our show at in Don Rocha, mm-hmm. which was uh, last weekend, uh, and then uh, the, it was a two day festival, and I went back the second day. It was like the first thing happening again after uh, you know after the the restrictions, hmm. and uh, so I was there all day talking to people over loud music as well. well that's bad. And uh, then the next day when I woke up, my whole head voice range was gone. Yeah, I couldn't get there. <laughs> yeah. I could talk like this, but the whole head voice yeah. range was gone. I was like, "Dude, you happens. need to be be a bit more careful now yeah. about this." But that's also what you hear every serious singer say it you know these type of things it's just especially when you're in tour you have to sing a lot and like just shut up a lot and don't talk over people at in loud situations mm. so it's uh yeah it's just part of the drill and so, something by the way um that i found interesting that i stumbled upon recently like i'm the, the, for, we haven't talked a little bit for some months about this but i definitely stepped out of my obsession with it you know because i had those years now of like practicing yeah. ex- excessively i realized okay it's much more for me at this point it's it's more productive to just do short periods of time maybe 20 minutes a day instead of hours and yeah. i get more out of that if i do that smartly and mindfully than uh, making exactly. hours and i i've i've learned that already from you uh, that i was like okay it's less in my nature to go uh, and practice a lot l- like you did, but mm. but still, I knew like okay, um, yeah, I'm I'm gonna have to you know like pick some points in the week or every day yeah. for a little bit and not overdo it yeah. in in, uh, in hours. Even though in the beginning when you just released uh, um, yeah, the second uh, Oceans mm. album, I was like trying singing along to it quite uh, frequently um, <laughs> to. Just to see if I could make the same sound as you. Just yeah. to, it was just a basic. I wasn't. I'm not going to sing the way you do on that album. But I was mm-hmm. interested in just feeling how it would feel if I would try to make a similar sound. Yeah. And uh, yeah, some some of these things are very useful, like the the mm-hmm. hay exercise and the the kind of the 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 thing like how you enter the note with the like oh, yeah, sneak, yeah. Yeah. like <laughs> oh yeah yeah the, those uh, type of whiny sounds yeah. uh yeah so that that seems to work really well for me now as well oh, with good. with just starting with the notes yeah yeah the, man that's half the work right like how you well with everything but yeah yeah how you, how you attack it. but it's helping uh yeah yeah so i'm, I'm progressing and the mixed voice is good. progressing and um Oh, and w- one thing I wanted to say yeah. uh, when I was saying uh, I stumbled upon something interesting. So I saw this interview on uh, Rick Beato's channel. You know that dude, right? From on YouTube. Yeah, I've seen something of his uh, of his okay, channel yeah, before. He's older kind of uh, music nerd guy, guitar player, producer, and uh, oh kid, right, guy. yeah. I think I saw some some video of him. Uh, uh, like he was talking about the most complex uh, pop song. Oh ever. yeah, yeah. I think I actually sent you that. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. you did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought you would get a kick out of uh, shit. That was <laughs> that insane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, he did like very recently had a pretty long interview with Miles Kennedy, uh-huh. and I already uh, heard him talk like Miles about his singing a little bit in the past, but never this detailed. Mm-hmm. And what was clear uh, from that interview is that he's also very much a taught singer. He's not a natural at all. And he went through exactly the same troubles as, as we did. And, and oh, many what a relief. Too. But yeah, somehow <laughs> that, like, and he's such a good singer, right? So that yeah. somehow that feels a little bit like, okay, that okay. is indeed... There is indeed. hope for us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can actually do that stuff. That's good to know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I found that funny. Okay. But well, then, I might want to watch that then. Yeah. Yeah, there's now a lot of like insightful information on, on about how to get better at it or something. But okay. What what is by the way interesting is that he eventually got into this kind of old Italian del canto school of you know as a way to to kind of stabilize his voice. Okay. That's for me also what is working right like. Uh, the, in, you know, briefly, the the type of things we talked about last the last time we uh, yeah we practiced some vocals that was also like more traditional uh, bel canto technique, just okay. more operatic technique, right? Which is like the last place I would ever think I would find answers for yeah you know singing in a pop way, but yeah yeah. But now yeah, it helped me when you mentioned that. It helped me really understand how uh, yeah these tenors like Pavarotti uh, mm-hmm. make. Can sing high and have still this wide sound with the yeah. lo- with the lower larynx. Yeah, right. Yeah, 
that is so elusive indeed. Yeah. But the thing I'm I'm running into now is that I can I I'm starting to be able to control the larynx more and more. Mm -hmm. And but even even if I can keep it down, at some point I will feel something higher up my throat, like something is blocking there. Mm -hmm. And it's it's exactly the area where I'm making the distortion now. And um, mm -hmm. when I was uh, done with singing uh, the, the last show, I was like, I wasn't really too happy about my vocal performance. And uh, the production uh, uh, production lady was like, oh, what was it for you on stage? And I mentioned that. And she said like, oh, oh what is it? I, I, I happened to be a vocal coach as oh. well. Or what, what, was, what was up? It's like, yeah, this and that. And then she was like, where do you feel that distortion happening? And I was like, it's up here. Mm -hmm. And she said like, no, well, if you're doing it right, you should feel it like here behind your teeth. I was like, okay, maybe I should book a lesson with you. I don't know. Yeah, and um, that's where you run if you go down the rabbit hole. You like you hear so fucking many different things from many different coaches because that like particular thing, like where you should feel it, like is especially something they talk about frequently. Yeah. And I've heard also the exact opposite a lot of times from different people. You know, like, oh you should feel it like down here or mm. you should feel it. So man, I I kind of gave up on that world okay. because, but that's not to say it might not work for you, right? No. But for me, I, yeah, you, you know, I dove into this whole, oh, like, yeah, yeah. down the rabbit yeah. hole and I watched probably every vocal coach on YouTube, <laughs> like hundreds of videos and it's just so fucking confusing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's too bad. Um, but yeah. All I, all I can say about it is uh, uh, the way certain things feel and if they mm. feel correct or if they feel narrowed down and if I make the distortion sound, I'm, I'm not mm. losing a lot of air, so it's very constricted yeah. and uh, th that is nice. But yeah, up until now, I didn't have really have problems with it, but I'm, I'm, I'm still, I'm still, I have the, the hunch that it's not completely correct what I'm doing. Mm. So, at least yeah, the, I don't know. the good thing is that lo like wrong and right are so close to each other. That's that's one thing I realized. It's not like you can sing entirely wrong. Like if you definitely, if you already can achieve the result that you you want and you you are there, then it it's really minor tweaks, yeah. you know, to get it right. But if I would, yeah, I don't know. If I, for instance, look at uh, the the, the uh, not uh, if I listen to the distortion sound of this other vocal coach on YouTube, Chris mm -hmm. Lipe. Mm -hmm. If I hear him do the distortion, it's it's uh, it reminds me a lot of the the distortion in uh, Jens Kitman's vocals, mm -hmm. uh, especially from uh, a while back from mm -hmm. from Destroy Race Proof, Chaos Fear, Nothing. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, so maybe maybe there's like an overlap and like, oh, that's how it should sound if it's done right. And it's not the same sound as when I do it. Sure, but what you do, I think is very close to how Devin Townsend, for example, does it. Like I'm pretty yeah, sure that's, that's the more same like technique, it. but just different physiology and different yeah. sh shapes of mouth and everything. But that's just to say that if there's one guy who, who has proven that he can do it sustainably, it's Devin. That's so, right, that's so right. That should be doable. Yeah, no, so. and indeed, and, and you know, the other, the biggest pitfall that I have is because it, it's, first of all, it's very energetic music. Mm -hmm. And I feel I need to also uh, perform that in, in an energetic way yeah. uh, vocally. So my, my natural uh, pitfall is to, to Give overdo it. Yeah, yeah, same here. And I'm starting to, I'm starting to, to uh, uh, yeah, get that better. And it's like, okay, but don't, you know, you don't need to like, ah! you definitely don't. It's like, no. just a bit is enough. Yeah. And dial down the, the amount of distortion. It still sounds like that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a learning process, and I'm still busy with it. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Okay. Want to wrap it up? I think so. Yeah. Because okay. I really need to go to the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Drinking well, so much water. If you want, you can uh, sh give a shout out to where people can find you. Although I did also put the the links beneath in the YouTube description, so people can find you anyhow. Like online, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm just um, my band uh, has a website outdark.com uh, and a Facebook page and uh, Instagram and Twitter everything. And um, if you want to, if you live in the Netherlands or in the region, and you want to see Outdark play, we're playing. In Rotterdam this Friday, oh, cool. uh, in Baruch, ah. 
we're playing in Haarlem in Patronaat on Sunday the 24th oh, in an nice. afternoon show. Both shows together with uh, uh, Inferum, that's the other band of our guitar player David. <laughs> and then uh, we are very lucky to do three support shows in December with uh, this French band called Igor. Awesome. Um, yeah, really happy to do those shows. Um, it's, uh, I, from the top of my head, it's December 4, December 5, and December 7. No, that's not correct. It's 6, 7, and 9. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. And it's in, um, in Nijmegen, Doornosje, and Tivoli, Utrecht, and uh, in Brussels. Oh, nice. Yes, but you, yeah, just go look up the, the dates uh, on, on the tour poster that we put online uh, uh, on the, our Facebook page. Cool. Yeah. Right. I'm definitely gonna go to one of those. Great. I'm excited to see you then. Because cool. I haven't seen you with Autor. No. So that's cool. No. Well, yeah, I think uh, the funny thing is we played in the Tivoli Utrecht earlier this year. Yeah. And, and uh, it was came really, by. really amazing venue and really amazing that the hall that we played in the Ronda is it's it was insane. Um, and uh, it was really nice experience on that stage. So mm. I believe this show is also in that hall. So I'm, I'm really uh, excited to be able to perform there again. Good. Yeah. Well, good luck with that. Thank you. And thank you for coming over for this little talk. Thank you. Fun. Yeah, it was fun. Good. Yeah. I'm I happy liked you it. enjoyed it as well. Yeah, I liked it a lot. All right. Well, thanks everyone for watching, for those of you who watched, and see you next time. Mm-hmm. <laughs>